Hey guys, just wanted to welcome you back for another project. This is just kind of an impromptu stash busting session. Um, I don't want to do too long of an intro because I will be coming back with a quick recap, but I had some stuff left over from some other projects that I was doing with uh, Dawn at Shiny Silver Treasures for our stash busting. So I just grabbed some card bases in my stash that I had cut from cardstock a while ago, and I don't... I'm not sure how much of this video will be put in um, on the final edits because I know I've got a lot of longer content videos out. So I'm trying to like do shortcuts for some of the other stuff that I do just to kind of keep it, keep it not quite so long, if that makes sense. So um, anyway, it's just a fun little project. I hadn't intended to do it, but I just sort of seized the moment. So anyway... Hopefully you guys are crafting along, hopefully you're stash busting, and enjoy the process, and I will meet you back for the recap.
guys I have finished this little impromptu stash busting project and if I didn't say it in the quick little intro that I did um, these were card bases I had cut down out of an absolute mongo pile of 12 by 12s I had way too many that I had room for so to keep from having to just get rid of them or donate them or something I just kept the papers that I liked out of it and then donated the rest. So I probably kept more than half of the pages in those books, but because I didn't like all of them, I had to make the choice. So I just donated the ones that I didn't really care for and kept all the rest. And then I cut them all down into different sized card bases. I did this size, which would be, I guess you could call like a slimline size or style. But I did A2, 5x7s, and 6x6s just to get like a variety of sizes to use up the paper. Um, so that's where these card bases came out of. And I was supposed to start stash busting these about, I don't know, probably two years ago now. And I'm really happy that I finally got to it because I was nearly ready to just donate these and get rid of them. But I'm glad I didn't because now I can put them to good use. Because one, the expense of getting them, because even though they, I got them on sale, about 90% of them were on sale at Michael's when they used to have those sales where you could get the 12 by 12 paper pads for five bucks. Um, and then also later, the time it took and the effort it took to cut them all down into um, the card bases themselves, I didn't want to waste that. So I just stuck with them and kept moving them around the craft room, but now I'm definitely digging in and getting to use them so that has been absolutely that has been awesome to finally it, it just really is so satisfying so if you have not done any big stash busting in your own studios or craft rooms or whatever I really really cannot recommend it enough Don and I both say the same thing when we do our collabs because that's how it started um you know we wanted to encourage each other to get in there and dig through our stuff so we're trying to find the oldest stuff in our room the stuff that we have the most of lying around and just all kinds of you know coming at it from all kinds of different angles to get different projects to really use stuff and it's paying off so that's really how that came about was helping each other stay focused on stash busting and then taking that same encouragement to you guys in our videos and stuff so anyway sorry side note aside I'm, I'm trying to keep this recap to the bare minimum um, so just kept it simple that is still my number one favorite style is um, not only just shutting up letting the paper tell me what it wants me to do or letting my eyeballs tell me what I need to do or whatever um, with the paper just kept it simple stash busted a ton of scraps embellishments, stickers, ephemera, love from Lizzie Peeloff's lace and gemstones. And I really try not to think too hard. I just do the process where I take the scraps, flip through, pair them with the card, move them to the side, you know, until I get everything matched up. And then I just go through and then I start doing the assembly. The other thing, I can't remember if it's in the video now. Um, if I didn't, because this is a thinner cardstock, and this is something to keep in mind, if you do paper crafting and you're going to do the same thing where you're going to chop down a bunch of 12 by 12s or whatever cardstock you have, if it is on the thin side and you do want to use these for greeting cards, I definitely recommend putting in a panel um, to insert on the inside to help keep the card from being too flimsy and especially on this side where people typically write the message you want to make sure that it's strong enough that if people are writing with a ballpoint pen or something to write their message it doesn't poke through so that's why um, before I even did anything I think I had chopped down the card stock to make these panels and these are three and three quarters inches wide by seven yeah my little cheater note here 
seven and three fourths inches in height to fit on the inside. If it felt like it was too too flimsy on the front panel of the card, then I added a panel on the inside there as well, just to make sure everything was nice and solid for the people and handling them for getting through the mail or however way they're going to deliver it to the person. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't too flimsy, that it could get easily damaged, or like I said, make sure their pen couldn't poke through when they're trying to write the message. So, um, so I did that first, cut down the panels, and then I think for the most part I would add the panel. You may have seen me doing that where I added the panel um, on the inside when I was done decorating the card. Um, but other than that, I think for the most part, most of the process was in, in the video. Even on speed up, I think I tried to keep in as much as I could. And it's only 17. I grabbed more when I pulled the stack out of the drawer from the drawer unit behind me. But um, the ones that I worked on in today's video, there's only like 17. And I kept some in the, the vertical layout or the book oh, where it opens like a book. And then the rest are in the landscape or, you know, the top fold. So I'll just do the quick flip through. Like I said, just really keeping it simple, letting the paper, just let the paper shine, basically, is my rule of thumb. Um, especially something like this. I love the artwork on that one. So I just came in with a small panel of the cardstock that, that had the music on it. The one embellishment sticker and then finished it off with some of the gemstones just like that on the little bit of lace I added to the edge and that's it you know simple can be you can put a lot of impact in a card in keeping the layout simple if that makes sense so that's what I tried to stick to and it's sort of a combination probably heavier in the feminine style theme um, but where it felt like I could get away with like a masculine type theme, that's what I did on the cardstock. So again, these are the ones that I did in the landscape and just made another massive dent in sentiments I've had laying around. Like I said, the embellishments, the peel-offs, gemstones, all of it. So that is my 17 cards from today's little impromptu stash busting session. And you probably will see more along these lines popping up in videos here and there. I did one not too long ago taking um, wall decor stickers for like a girl's room or something like that. They had these really cute little um, mermaid images, like a cartoon mermaid image um, that I turned into cards for girls, birthday cards. And then I took that, the rest of that um, paper pack, it was 24 sheets of cardstock from the Dollar Tree of all places for a buck 25. I got 40 cards out of that paper pack from the Dollar Tree for a dollar 25. That, unless you get a massive sale at some online store, you don't ever get paper that cheap. And it was a good, thick quality too. They really, really upped their game. So, like I said, Never underestimate the power of stash busting and just going for it. So, and it doesn't matter if it's paper crafting, it's whatever crafting you do. If you have more stuff in your craft room that you could use, that's the stuff that you want to target. Target, dig through your, the corners of your room, the closets, the drawers, all the boxes shoved into the back. You know, go through that, pull it out, and if it's still usable, then use that up because it is seriously all the time and the effort it took to get it and the expense it took to get it why waste it use it and have fun with it so i'm gonna leave that off here thank you again like i said for watching it is always so much fun hanging out with you and i really do hope that whatever crafting you do i do hope that you do craft along and with that being said take care stay safe and i will see you in the next video Hey